who come from Europe or a country that no longer exists. Uh, as well as my the country, so to speak, my family perished in the fires of hatred under the Nazi rule in Europe. So my the country is Bavos Czechoslovakia today, it's a Czech Republic. Uh, I perhaps should start to tell that I do acknowledge that anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, was notorious, chronic, sometimes low, lower key and sometimes violent in Europe for at least so two millennia. We have been in uh, a Bohemian, Moravian country I come from for the 10th century onward with dubious or changing luck, with pogroms, uh, expulsions, but never ever in those long time of our existence there have been confronted with a the belief that we cannot live. And moreover, it has shock, shockingly come from a nation which in Europe started or was evaluated as a nation educated, as a nation with no illiteracy, a nation which we have got high claims to achievement in all walks of life of European after the First World War. And uh, perhaps it was our, shall I say, naivete that we feel Virtually the first time I believed that we are standing for gas chambers was when I was already in concentration camp. We just simply didn't believe it. And it boggled the mind then, and I hope it boggles your mind now. Because uh, innocent people put to death just because they were born Jews is something which the concept of the 20th century after the Renaissance was to a human being unimaginable. But it was, we did try to leave Europe. We did understand that we do not have future in the continent in which we were branded as uh, people who cannot get educated, who cannot develop our talents, sustain ourselves. But again, with a pain in heart, I will repeat that there's no nation in this whole world that has been willing to open the gates and accept at least some of the tragically losing Jews because by that time, a lot of thought have known that the difference from anti-Semitism of late, which was a long time as culture of Europe, that if there is, is in the practice a Nazi uh, practice and develop elimination of anti-Semitism, meaning that no Jew can survive, meaning that no matter what a Jew would do, if he will be willing to give up his religion, whatever he would want to do, there was no redeeming feature. He had to die. And that is a growth a white net of guilt, but people didn't know. Then, you know, in 1938, there was a conference convened in uh, an avion in which President Roosevelt asked nations to please do something for the beleaguered Jews. And every uh, representative stood up, expressed regrets with the fate of Jews, but not one or have any suggestion or allow any, uh, any number to enter. And so we European Jews became trapped in a, a, a place where we couldn't survive and surrounded by a world who did not allow us to escape. So it is this great deal of pain and of course guilt of all that this has happened in which six million people have perished for no other reason but that they were born Jews. And among those six million, it's my pain again to say that these were my parents, my sister, my grandmother, and all the extended family I have. So by 1939, when the Nazis invaded and occupied the country with a brutality second to none, I had a family of 50 members, 1945. When all this came to a crushing end, I was returning to Prague with broken health and heart, and on the entire family I was the sole survivor. And by no means was my fate unique. Uh, the, some over 93% of European Jews perished in the fires of the Nazi hatred. And there was nothing, absolutely nothing we could have done to change the fate. It was not that any, we wouldn't have tried anything to survive. But in came uh, to which my family was brought in 1942, and we came to Theresienstadt, and it was a very bizarre concentration camp, and there my nuclear family, my immediate family died. It was mainly due to lack of food and subhuman living conditions. And food, yes, like in the case of Ukraine, has been used as a weapon, as 
the, the more you died of starvation and illnesses emanating and resulting from this type of malnutrition, the happier the Nazis were, because the fewer they will have to gas a little further down in the east, where the death installation were all uh, erected. So uh, by 19, uh, through the three years of concentration camp, it was three unimaginable years, which I have memorial memorialized in my book, because I did realize that the pa passing of survivors, there will be few people who will be able to say I was there, and my day unfolded in, the, in that way. The result of which I have, my, my life uh, was developed in this uh, consecutive way. So I do hope that uh, future generations will learn to distinguish evil and the differences of different shades of evil, because to devise a theory that some people have got to die, because that if uh, something the people do not agree or can uh, hate, it's, I, it's unimaginable then, and I hope it's unimaginable today. And so uh, few of us did survive, and I think Europe today has not, no, next to no Jewish uh, population. And I think that still their anti-Semitism has been eradicated. And I think this is a goal which I have set for myself in addition to the fact that I am talking about the Holocaust and try to teach students about the enormities of hatred, prejudices, and biases, no matter where they are rooted, be it color, be it religion, absolutely irrelevant, but also the fact that the fact should not be forgotten forgotten that there are people who eventually might try to rewrite the history, who may try to uh, have agenda to whitewash the perpetrators, and this is up to us to stand tall and say no, you have got to be, you, have got, you cannot be passively watching infamy as it unfolds. And I think that I'm, I'm exhausting my time allotted to me, so I'm thanking you for listening to me, and I hope that we will, you all will pick up the challenge and stand tall against hatred, racism, and any, any discrimination at all. And thank you for coming.